Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to today. We're going to get going. Um, my name is Stephanie, and I'm the Public Programs Coordinator here at the gallery. Uh, welcome to today's uh, event with Evelyn Roth, The Big Recycle. Um, and I just want to make a little note. Uh, I'm holding a microphone, but it isn't actually connected to that because it's for the camera. <laughs> So, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> but Evelyn has a microphone for when she speaks, and you'll, you'll hear that. Um, but yeah, so uh, as we begin, I, I want to acknowledge that uh, the Vancouver Art Gallery, where we all are right now, uh, is situated on the unceded territories and ancestral homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And um, we are indebted to those nations and to learning along Side them, and uh, this acknowledgement is a gesture of respect toward the indigenous stewards on whose land we occupy and the gallery is situated on, and I get to work here and live here, and so I extend my grateful yeah. gratitude, and um, yeah, thank you. So I'm really happy to welcome you all to this special afternoon with Ms. Evelyn Roth. <laughs> Uh, and Evelyn's Roth, e Evelyn Roth's work is on view right now on the third floor and kids take over. Um, so we're really pleased to have Evelyn here travel to us all the way from Australia with her team. Um, this programming today is meant to bring together visitors of all ages to celebrate Evelyn's extensive body of work created over the past 50 years and introduce her practice to a new generation of art lovers. So currently based in Australia, as I said, Evelyn Roth is a multimedia artist who was active in Vancouver in the 1960s and 70s. Evelyn was a founding member of Intermedia, which was a group of artists, musicians, filmmakers, and dancers who adopted a collaborative and interdisciplinary approach to art making. And working within this experimental vibe, Evelyn developed a highly original practice and became known for producing wearable artworks and ambitious installation pieces constructed by knitting and crocheting, recycled materials like videotape and, and all sorts of inventive materials. I have in my hand this Evelyn Roth recycling book that uh, we have in our library. Um, and it's really beautiful. And the, her slideshow project, lecture performance is going to you know, tell us more about that. Evelyn is going to present a slide projector lecture performance wearing her Vancouver slide dress that looks back and shares her personal accounts of the past 50 years that she has made work in this region and beyond. And responding in a musical way to Evelyn is the Infuse Band in the back. And uh, following Evelyn's slideshow around 2 o'clock PM, this space will be transformed and it will become a collective making space for all to take part in. Evelyn's going to sort of teach uh, or, or, or uh, model how to weave with uh, upcycled VHS tapes. And there's also some costumes to try on, monarch butterflies. And um, yeah, I will guide you through that. So thank you all. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> it's so great to be back home in Vancouver. And also, thank you to Andre and Jen, who's not here at the moment, but for the next generation, because we were part of Intermedia, what, 40, 50 years ago, artists, filmmakers, musicians, sculptors, with the Vancouver 1960s, 70s world of enterprise and creation. So I'm going to show some slides, but I'm also honoring a number of friends and artists who worked with me and have now passed. You know, I'm at here at 85 looking at faces and trying to remember behind it all. It's just so wonderful. So Jen and Andre with uh, Garden Reflex, you saw the little clip. They have a unique way of filming. They're using something old and making it look fresh and new. And they're traveling with me and also my dear neighbor friend, Ali, she's in the back. She's been wonderful. You know, I'm uh, surviving of two spinal surgeries and I got a lot of heavy 
luggage to move around. And uh, with them at the airports and coming through, it's been really greatly appreciated. And also, as I'm stopping in my journey, I'm dropping off one big heavy suitcase. So it gets lighter and lighter as I get home. And there'll be some things dropped off here. You're welcome to video hats and saying thing and thinking. Just makes that trunk in the basement a little lighter. Okay? So if we start soon, I think you can hear me. I acknowledge the land of the people, the Musqueam, the Kelowna, who've lived here. I live in Australia. We always acknowledge the elders, the indigenous people. And um, I acknowledge also my loyal friends and <laughs> who are here today. She's great. Thank you, family. We'll stay here. We'll start. Kitsilano, in the 1960s, Second and Stevens. This is just an ordinary slide, but there was oh, horse chestnut trees. They still exist. And they would drop all their gummy, gummy things and knockers, and they'd ground people's things. And one day, the city of Vancouver decided they were going to trim all the lower branches. They looked out, and I could see the neighbors and everything. So we'll see what happened with my handy hands of crocheting. So they cut that down. Next slide. So crocheted up some old nylon cord, strung it between the trees, and it kind of hid the house next door. Next one. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> it's Christine is expressing herself. <laughs> so, this is the house across the street. Uh, Second and Stevens in Kitsilano was there last weekend. It's for sale again. You know, guys? <laughs> Carry on. We have to fit this in an hour. So I discovered nylon salvage cord, which is left over from lingerie manufacturing. And uh, in the United States, in Japan, everywhere, we started crocheting s screens, including hammocks and stuff. So that's one of my other extensions. As we have them, families were going away, high rises were coming, they couldn't afford to live there, S schools were being emptied, 1979, Kitsilano. West Broadway Citizens Committee was formed in our Kitsilano house with Donald Gutstein, and we began the fight. No more high rises, three family living. Next slide. Poor old lady, you know, we, had, we knew how to deal with the media in those days. <laughs> Including, you will hear, Haida Gwaii, anti-logging. There's some young people who come to various communities who know how to work with the media. And uh, this picture, another one of someone standing in front of a bulldozer, really put the feeling, the passion. Then we had some fun at Tatlo Park with the garden skirt. And in this corner there is Donald Gutstein, one of the originators. <laughs> the family garden going, we keep going. <laughs> then along came Habitat Forum, 1976. The book is still being written again. It got not published in China. We had five derelict airplane hangars, and this wonderful man, Al Clapp, organized government funding for 110 people, so-called unemployed, to work for six months at the unemployed level to renovate five airplane hangars into the United Nations Conference Center. This is the first ceiling that we stitched slide out of nylon and it was so big we needed a whole train of us carrying it and we had one of uh, Bill Reed's artworks we projected it on the face of the hangar 
and then painted in design on scaffolding. What? So there's us, you see Jericho Beach carrying that ceiling. <laughs> it was the size of a football stadium, 100 feet by 120 feet. But when you work like that, you never want to work small again. Mm -hmm. You like to make a dress or something. <laughs> so anyhow, it, it, it began my working big. Next slide. And here's my loyal friend is getting things. Do you think I had nine wonderful stitcher helpers who are uh, painters? And this is the f ceiling as we're working on. We're relaxing there. Now, we also had architects, paintings. They had a sawmill. They planed the wood. These bleachers to sit on were made there. Denim donated by a company, padded with carpet company. This is the ceiling. And next slide. Through the lights of this design were eyeballs, ovoids. The spotlights came through the two eyeballs onto the stage. On the stage was Mother Mary Teresa, Buckminster Fuller, Margaret Mead, and then Margaret Tudor walked the plank, a parade for fresh water for the children of the world. That's Justin's mama. So we knew things weren't gonna happen better in the future. Let's carry on with that. There were also a lot of things like Sharon Hafnay said, who did beautiful murals. You know, these were all along the windows, and there were 16 windows that were batiked. So these five airplane hangers became a really wondrous, wondrous, colorful, and wholesome conference center. Moving on, then in the 70s, I got an invitation to Haida Gwaii. There were a lot of young people there who were wanting to stop that logging. So we had a caravan presented by the native thieves. Next, next uh, yeah. And lots of ceremonies. We learned, you know, the ways of potlatching and gift giving. And uh, including some of the traditional dances, the monster dance. And, you know, Fresh poles, they don't want them to be called totem poles anymore. You guys know that. They're now called poles. And uh, I was just in Haida Gwaii last week for a potlatch ceremony, Christian white family. It was so oh, incredible, you know, to see the culture continuing. My inflatable salmon is there for the children to learn their language and enjoying the button blankets, the ceremonies. And so they said, Evelyn, they'd like a big salmon, because a salmon is very much part of their culture. So this is the first salmon I made. It's got three colors in each scale, as you would with a Japanese windsock. And uh, it became a half hour dance drama with original music all computerized by David McClay in Toronto. Is that me making that sound? Sorry. And uh, keep going. Till eventually, Hannah Lore Evans, a beautiful designer and a narrator. So it's a half hour dance drama called Salmon Dance. And it, they all takes part in and around the inflatable salmon. 1982, we were the official exchange between the city of Vancouver and the Edinburgh Festival. We performed salmon dance below the Edinburgh Castle. And through the last 15 years, these animal dance and the costumes allowed me to travel to different indigenous people in the world, in New Zealand, some California, salmon dance has been performed. This here is at the UBC Museum of Anthropology when uh, Dr. Michael Ames was the director. And we were the sort of connecting link between the tradition and the contemporary. So a couple of weeks ago, I awarded the salmon dance costumes back to the Haida Gwaii community, and they're continuing their school program. 
And when you don't have an inflatable, you open the zipper up and people can come in. It's a star and wind song. 1979 was the International Year of the Child. So I went to City Hall and said, give us the $7,000 they usually spend on silk screening cotton banners and I'll have the children of Vancouver stitch and make all the banners. So you'll just see them come up. So there they had to lie on, I had all the banners trimmed and uh, hemmed in the vocational school as part of their learning process. And each child lay on a banner and some of them had high school did their own designs, like the sun bursting sun or another one. They could add other colors. And eventually you had these children dancing in the sky all the way across back, 700. And one more slide, I think. And so we got one row of zigzag, but you have to row two rows. It's like if you're making sales, do two rows of zigzag on every scene. So we rented a nightclub in Gastown, and it had drummers on stage. Women brought their sewing machines, put them on the bar table, and they stitched the second row of zigzag to complete the banners. So it was a great thingies there. Miss Christina is adding some color. <laughs> well, <laughs> next slide. <laughs> oh, thank you. And there was the one that to play with optical illusions. You're driving over the bridge and it's going rinky and rinky and rinky. Maybe some of the high school kids had a chance to play with banners. And other colorful ones, you saw the, looks like Habitat for them. Then there were other sort of house frontage. Go for the Matard Museum in Calgary. We thought we'd give it a frog beaver mouth, but fabric. And other, you know, Burnaby Art Gallery. Use of fabric and nylon. And this is just sun sculpture hung in Edmonton. We just, you know, architects tied it up in the high rises. It's 1983. And continuing on, this is nylon salvage cord that's left over from lingerie manufacturing anywhere in the world that are using nylon. And it's the area that attaches the fabric to the mill. They're very, very strong. And basically it was free, another slide. And so it's a matter of collecting bundles of this stuff and rolling it into balls so you could use it. And then using your fingers as a crochet hook, keep coming. Yeah, big ones, including strong enough face of a building for dancers to crawl up on the side of this. This is in Edmonton, 1983. And working with Aboriginal people up in the uh, middle of Australia near Alice Springs and uh, you know little little children who don't <laughs> have a, learn faster if they learn by showing and doing as their parents do than by school so they were crocheted up really quickly and what how did you get to Australia I was invited <laughs> sorry I was invited to Australia after Silver Harris at the gar uh, Adelaide Festival Center saw a crocheted car cozy I had made in Canada about a videotape and she liked that idea and she said Evelyn come to Australia and fill our jungle in our gallery so I got a Canada Council travel grant this is 1979 my first visit to Australia and then through her I said we're all the people we're all the Aboriginal people there weren't any in the cities so she developed three different workshops for me. Crocheting, I also did rabbit hunting and knitting. This is uh, my home in Kitsilano. We always had webs. You hang in the ceiling. And then my moving sculpture company. If you look at YouTube, you'll see a film woven in time. They are crawling, moving. Beautiful film made by Tony Westman. 
It's won a number of awards, and it is focused on YouTube. Gail's there, she's giggling. <laughs> she's in here naked. <laughs> Thanks. This is Brisbane Commonwealth Games, crocheted up in the Botanic Gardens. It's happened, it's stuck. And then to stretch the net after you finished crocheting it, you always make a circle. You would have someone in the middle and bounce them around a few times to make sure everything's strong and nothing was gonna go run. So we'll do that later with the videotape. More, the dance company we always carted these construction on the top of my car. <laughs> Kitsilano. Then nylon continued on, keep going. And uh, this was a Chinatown. We did some wonderful parades with my inflatable dragon. And uh, other drummer, he made an exploit, I think his drum mother. But she made him. There's Tad Young. Or many people you might recognize. Tad had the narrowest office in Carroll Street. It was only one meter wide. And drum mother was a big drummer. He drummed. It was also, you know, we worked with street theater. My inflatable rainbow, which is in Ottawa. This is like 1986 or whatever. The inflatable maple leaf looks like a fat pillow, but it's still around. <laughs> kind of a nice one. And then the, one of the biggest, biggest stadium shows was in 1983 in Edmonton, the World University Games. And this was designed by Australian art, uh, community artist, Marin. Uh, she got her master's degree on it. And this is a map of Canada. It's spread over a football field. And each of the red lines defines the provinces. And each one of these had a emblem of the province in a white bag and each one came out of the bag, was inflated with dancers around. So there's the beaver, the things, and the porcupine, and the del ram, and the buffalo, that went to Calvary in six. The silver seal, that one over there, is in Hawaii, and way over there you see the lobster. He comes out when I have a big lobster feed at my home. You can see it. Um, this is the spirit house, inflatable, with a whole one hour long dance drama presented at Expo 1986. The Roger Deegan, the composer, Canadian composer, he and I both had a residency at Banff Art Center at the Leighton Colony, where each of the six studios are built by a different architect. And uh, Douglas Cardinal did the composer studio. Roger was in that one. We worked on it for a year or two. It's an hour-long drama, and this is it at Expo. 1986. The turtle, one of my inflatables, I love the ones, and you go inside, he's one of the bigger ones, and it'll hold 80 children inside, and sometimes, listen to this, the Adelaide Zoo rents these big inflatables, children come with sleeping bags, they can have a night in the zoo. It's a good idea, we can do that too. The crocodile, He's been around. <laughs> the boys have taken him up to Arnhem Land, Northern Thing, and inside. You can see the colors, because when you're in it listening to a story, the movement and the colors actually has an impact onto you know, your brain. You'll remember it. Children will remember that forever. It's a really good propaganda tool. I made two different tigers. The first one was for Western Wilderness in Vancouver and then for a uh, threatened the Bengal tiger for India. And it exists there, there's one living there. And uh, I must say I stitched them. And then I would get my wonderful, talented painters. Linda Neville, the beautiful artist, she painted the face. And she's having on a ladder, painting on this inflatable to get it right. I could do this kind of stuff on the sewing machine to get it all ready. But the faces all had to be personally painted. And the big ram, he's one of the stadium pieces, but he's still around. And he's got such a big head with big ears, he gets hot. 
And one year he was at Whistler Mountain and he got so hot he went up in the air and landed on the chairlift, but it wasn't moving. <laughs> so he got rescued. Then another year he was hurting down 2nd Avenue with all the neighbors hanging on to him. But he's safe at home in my cupboard still, Del Ram. And uh, Coyote, but he's had many transformations. Sometimes he's a fox for Foxy Lady, and now he's an Australian dingo. So just as long as you get the color and shape right, you can change it depending on which culture it's wanted. The salmon and children, always my whole thing with the nylon zoo is the children express themselves and dance with costumes. And later today, we have monarchs, butterflies there that they'll be flying with. And they're birds. Back in the rainbow, inflatable. I think this is in Ottawa, maybe 1987. This is 1985. These were the Adian gateways. This was designed and made by Hanalor Evans. She's my really, really wonderful, talented artist. She worked with me for many, many years. And uh, this is one of her designs, the Asian gate. And uh, unfortunately, Hanalor passed away about five years ago. Now we're coming to the last big part. This is television. You know, everybody's running around with me, and everybody's watching TV. So I go to the TV stations and collect the big roll, and you'll see it. One roll of television is about $200. It's an hour's worth of tape, but it's one mile long. And you can get a lot of mileage out of this. You carry on, next one. So now you have the front of the Vancouver Art Gallery, the original building. And I'm setting off from this doorstep in my car cozy, in my Toyota, driving from Vancouver to St. John's, Newfoundland, Cape Spear, the furthest point east on the eastern, on the continent. And I stop at every capital city and crochet some video and the television guys come out and wear their hat and stuff. So this is setting out. And then I came home and the income tax said I paid out a T4A instead of T4B income tax form. So they wanted $500 back after my grant. So I stood out there on Georgia Street with my really armor outfit saying rip off. And three hours later, they called me upstairs and apologized. <laughs> then I got a letter from Ron Bestford. Ron Bestford, who was Minister of Finance, saying, oh, keep crocheting, and that was really good. So I always learned early that, you know, artists and being out there and colorful and standing up, things can happen. I really, really believe that community development. Yeah. The TV trap, which I think the Vancouver Art Gallery has a copy, but the whole thing is you're attached to the TV set and you're set there. <laughs> Uh, then we had Expo in Spokane, 1976, I think. I did the canopy entry for the BC Pavilion. They moved the totem poles from the museum and whatever to be on display. Everybody was really uptight about carpenter ants and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is the copy of the cover of my Evelyn Roth recycling book. There's still a few copies. I'd like to have it as an e-book, but it's printed in horizontal instead of vertical fashion, they can't quite work it out. That's the cover. Still a few books around. 1976, Talon Books. And on the video became so good, the videotape, good padding, you know, for rollerblading and uh, go. And there's this it. This is the Kitsilano House, second and Stevens. Right at Kitty Corner here, you'll see the sign with a colored picture. It still exists today, second and Stevens. Evelyn Rother is here. Alvin Ailey Dance Company right here. Robert Davidson rehearsed here. Even the Nylons played there one night. It was a great time. <laughs> and Robert there, Robert Sexton, my really dear friend, continued the energy and the parties on Saturday nights. <laughs> Nobody knew the difference. <laughs> cool. Uh, roller Derby, you know, Vancouver Art Gallery. <laughs> they do things. Well, she's doing this in the second last one. 
This is the first one made in Australia using ABC television. And if you crochet it up, it's really strong. And uh, we'll have some over there later. And continuing a black tennis tournament at Tatlow Park. Just goofing around with playing tennis. And rollerblading. Thanks. And there it is, the last show. I had trouble with the, the subject, the topic, community art. Canada Council had dance, explorations, film, but nothing with community. Australia had a community arts council. So I could really relate to that because I figured that you could work within the community. I had lots of Canada and other Canada grants for summer youth employment, like OFY, opportunities for youth, all those wonderful things were happening with young people July, August. So I'm just stating that because I feel it's time for a revival. Let's get back to that feeling, to that energy that we all had in the 70s, the second generation. Those children need it. They're not gonna be dip, 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 dipping on their iPads and all their things without having some hands-on, touching, tactile, communication, speaking to people, and uh, that's it. So for the moment, come and have a cup of coffee and whatever, and this is it. We're gonna do things. And this is Christine Elsie. Come on, stand up. She's my good friend. <laughs> She's been my dancer, dancer friend for many, many years. <laughs> She's also a professor of what, ecology or something. She's got many jobs. Anyway, darlings, thank you so much. We'll be around, we can chat, we can talk, we can do, yeah. That, you know what? Australia Council five years ago canceled community art as well. So it's up to us. It's up to us. Up to us. <laughs> yeah. Jump, jump, getting hot headed. Yeah, wow. that's it. Thank you so much, Evelyn and Chris. Thank you. <laughs> and Andre. You're Stephanie. We're like ahead of schedule. I thought we were going to, like, yeah. I, I, I'm, I have a quick question. Maybe since we are ahead of schedule, maybe we will sit. add QA quickly. I have a question about the Vancouver Art Gallery Roller Derby. What, what was, was that against them? The Vancouver Art Gallery Ro Roller Derby? Yeah, well, no, it was my roller derby. Okay. Yeah. They Tell me more their, about they that. They put their label on a lot of things then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it back. That's right. <laughs> bring it, that's what I said. Let's bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. They're fundraising for a new gallery. I hope they make it big with lots yeah, of big space. Big enough for a roller derby. Yeah, at least. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, Evelyn finished early, so we do have time for like two questions if anyone has any burning questions. Yeah. Other, otherwise, like the conversation is going to go on and on because, yeah, but I'm just going to hold the space here for now. Oh, question here. It's just a statement. When, when Evelyn was showing slides of the ceiling at um, Habitat Forum, it, I was one of the sewers, and in order to sew that ceiling, we put our sewing machines on skateboards because it was so huge, we couldn't <laughs> move the fabric, so we had to move the sewing machines. <laughs> what? That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, any more questions? Come on, this is the conversation. She's got it. There, she's got one. Oh. Yeah, good question. So the question was, what are people wearing? Evelyn, do you want to answer? So you what? made this suit for Ray. What people are wearing? Oh, yeah. Evelyn yeah, makes them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see in the 1970s, when the television used video, now it's all digital, Ray there in the back is wearing two-inch 1970s video. See how wide it is? It had brown and it had black. So that is actually woven. I'm, I w wove it. And then his friends are wearing hats. And, uh, those hats. crocheted out of tape. And those hats will be available for um, folks to try on yeah, during the workshop. It's, it's sort of at the end of the, you know, it's not produced anymore. It's a, 
they're at the end of videotape. You know, we're not getting any more tape. But, yeah. yeah. What we're using at the back is VHS to cassette tapes. Beverly, my dear, said to me, you know, Evelyn, that was 20 years ago. The children today might not know what videotape is. <laughs> you know, you didn't watch it. <laughs> so, yeah. But I've always liked the idea that uh, you have your old cassettes in the car. There. She's got it. See? That's 10 rows. Yeah. There, you got it. You've got them. They're all wearing it. See? And the, and the story goes, Daddy, Daddy's driving the car, and there's five cassettes in the back seat. Five cassettes. He said, bang them open. You got 10 pieces of video like that. Make a chain strong enough will drag your daddy out of the mug. So that's always been a good story and a way, a safety, safety net to use up, use old television tape. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm, say, I'm, I'm at the point, you know, I'm recovering from uh, two spinal surgeries, a broken neck. And I look at my cupboard and I see, oh, it's that trunk, trunk, give it away. Anybody wants it, you can have it. If you want it, wow. just empty it. I've had enough stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's all about upcycling, <laughs> recycling, and generosity. It's great. No, it's a lovely. Oh, we have one final question here. I know it's funny, but sometimes I think I'll have to say that it's part of Intermedia and Eric Metcalf. And he invited me to New York. There was a show called Fur and Feathers, somewhere in 1973. And in that show, I met some funky women. One was crocheting videotape, one was doing nylon cord. I mean, really, you don't know about these things, but somebody's found it. <laughs> And I was always anxious to use something in linear form that you would already crochet, you would have to cut it. And that's how it all began. <laughs> you know, like, it was important, like Habitat 76, there was people from around the around world. Uh, there was an architect from Columbia University. She gave me an exhibition in Sao Paulo, Brazil, here. There was a performing group from uh, South Korea I was there and went for a week to Seoul as an artist in residence for the whole thingy. And so some of these unusual events are all the clue. You just go for it. You don't know what you're going to do. Just say yes. Figure it out later. Just figure it out. <laughs> Good collection. Say yes. Just go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Mm, I love right. that. Thank you so much, Evelyn. So what's going to happen next is that we're going to sort of switch up the room. And the infused band is going to. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Maria. The infused band is going to be moving to the third floor rotunda to play in dialogue with Evelyn's work that's on view in the exhibition and kids take over. Um, so if you'd like to go to that, come to that. It'll take about 15 minutes to get that set up. But then here in this room, Yvette and Tyra and Heidi and Stanley are going to uh, begin reconfiguring the room. Um, the idea, right, Evelyn, is that there's going to be a weaving circle on the ground for the ch yeah, children in all ages. Up using, you know, tin things. We're going to make a big blanket shape. which is halfway there. We'll test its strength, and you'll be able to be hammocked and pretend you're in a jumpy castle, you know, whatever. <laughs> Anyway. Okay, playing, great. So everyone, also just to let you know that there's bathrooms down the hallway. There's a water fountain down the hallway. So feel free to go take a break and do what you need to do and come and go as you need. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. That's a whole other thing, Jane. Yeah, I think that that's a conversation that we... That, yeah. Thank you, everyone. We're going to run that up here. And yeah. It's hot.